were speaking about the United Nations and the European Union, they are actually pushing so-called comprehensive sexual education into kindergarten and schools. In Germany this began in the 70s and was a direct consequence of the 60, the, the student rebellion of the 60s, sexual liberation. So what is comprehensive sexual education? It means to start very early, even in kindergarten, uh, to teach children about masturbation, to teach them how to use their own body to achieve lust. Teach that to children. Uh, teach them about the different kinds of sexuality, small children, yeah? Uh, homosexuality, bisexuality, transsexual sexuality, and give them the idea that all this is normal. Change their concept of father, mother, woman, man, uh, and change it in the children. Then when they come to school, they are taught different kinds of sexual activity. Yeah, everything is fine. Uh, oral sex is fine, anal sex is fine. I have little brochures for children eight, nine, ten years where this is taught to children. Uh, then they are prepared for the first time. They can have the first time whenever they want, as soon as they are able to after puberty. And of course now the problem of pregnancy arises. So they have to be educated in contraception. Uh, in Western classes, comprehensive sexual education means they are learning in school, in class, to handle condoms with plastic penises. Yeah? That happens in the school in order to teach them about contraception. Uh, this means what we are really doing is we are taking away their childhood Childhood means that we have a free space where you can play and learn and discover the world and have good relations, love your parents, love your siblings, have friends. That is childhood, yeah? Without, we keep a realm where a child can just have freedom, the freedom of, child, of, of being a child and playing and learning. We have to be able, children especially, to have light relationships, friendships, to have a respectful relationship with their parents, to have a kind relationship to their siblings, to have good friends, yeah? And this is, when sexuality enters it, all this changes. Sexuality is difficult to live. It, it forms a special connection uh, between a very intimate, very deep connection uh, between people who have sexual relationships and childhood should be free of it. Uh, so why are they teaching this to children? Uh, it is very, very strange because we have a crisis of sexual abuse of children. Thousands and thousands of children are sexually abused. So this uh, this comprehensive sexuality education says if you teach children to use their body for their own satisfaction they can protect themselves against sexual abuse which is madness uh, only if you have a sense of intimacy you will say no yeah you will push away somebody who goes beyond that intimacy now you, you destroy the sense of uh, of protection of yourself by sexualizing children. And uh, w it is really, they're, they're even using the sexual abuse crisis for pushing that into the children. Uh, there are many severe consequences of sexualizing children. Destroy their feeling of shame. This is natural to every human being. Uh, since we are not in paradise anymore, we have a feeling of intimacy, of shame. We cannot expose everything except in love. And so when children are taught this kind of sex education with pictures, they have to talk about it, they have to write tests, they have to use the language, their feeling of shame is being destroyed. One is 
sexual transmitted diseases are explosive. The old sexual diseases like syphilis and gonorrhea and stuff like this comes back. Uh, and we thought it were, we had co conquered it, yeah? There's an explosion of it. And in the United States, 25% of the teenage girls have sexually transmitted diseases. Some of them make them infertile. And the problem is only once uh, you n notice the symptoms too late. Some, some of these chlamydia and so on, they are without symptoms for, for quite some time. And when you notice is you may already be infertile. Something may, ha may have happened to the ovaries and so on. So 25% of the teenage girls have sexual disease. Uh, then uh, you are always in danger of becoming pregnant. We have no total control over our pregnancy. Uh, so you have to use contraceptive uh, medication or, or condoms or whatever. Uh, when you become pregnant, what do you do? Will you be a young parent or will you abort? And these programs also push to children, okay, it's your personal decision, make a quick decision, abortion is no problem, we will help you to do it without your parents even know about it. Yeah. So this is when we talk about rights of the child, the United Nations talks about this, give the child the right to have sex and if necessary abort the baby which comes. Yeah. Then a third great consequence is that sexual intimate relationships go deep and if they break up as we all know it causes very deep suffering in your heart so young people lose the vision of love they use the ability to bond to say really yes to another person because they have been so hurt they have been so violated yeah uh, so they just they, they, they lose the vision of marriage, what it actually means. They lose the vision of love. So these are very serious conse consequences and we should try not to let our children be captured by this. It is like taking the children away from us. Yeah? There's a struggle also against the programs of United Nations and European Union to keep our parents parents rights intact yeah to to the the constitution the universal declaration of human rights says parents have the right to educate their child it is our right who has made the child yeah if i write a book it is my right to control who does who who makes use of, of a book if I give life to a baby, it is my child and I should be free to give my values to my child. We parents should have a, the main influence how our children are educated and the state and these institutions are taking that right away from us, from us and we have to fight for it. We have not yet, we, let's come to the gay movement. Uh, one part uh, to, to connect to the sexual education is of course to train children to accept all kind of different uh, sexual orientations. This is part of this comprehensive sexuality education. To start with children and to give them the idea that you can live out your sexuality however you like, it doesn't matter, it's your right. That means to change the inborn feeling a human being has. We have an inborn feeling that the unity of man and woman is the right thing because we are born from a man and a woman, from their unity, and because humanity will only exist if we have this unity between man and woman. So this is in our heart, and it is in the heart of every child. So how do we change this? One thing is to get at the children, give them children books where, where the prince marries the, prin the prince and things like this. And the other area is how do we change the value system of a whole society? Yeah? 
because all, all religions say heterosexuality is the right thing and homosexuality is wrong. However, they, they sanction it. Yeah, that is different in, in different countries. But it's inborn in the human being to say heterosexuality is the right thing. Uh, and in many, many countries of this world, this is, that is the traditional value system. Traditional is nothing bad. This is what has been, what has worked for a long time. That is tradition, yeah? It has been proved. It works. Um, so how do you change this? You cannot go directly. You have to use concepts which pretend this is good. The change we want is good. It appeals to something which you know is good. So what do we know is good? What are the names for, for what we think is good? It is freedom. We want freedom. We don't want suppression. Uh, like communism suppressed us, yeah? Nazi suppressed us. We want freedom as a human being. We want justice. We do not want, especially as Christians, we do not want that people are discriminated. We think every human being has the same dignity. And we, we respect the dignity of every human person. And we all sin, yeah? That is not something to take away from dignity. We respect the dignity of every person. Tolerance, yes, we want to be tolerant. If you have a different opinion than I, maybe you are a homosexual person, you have a different opinion than I have. I tolerate your, your different position. Uh, and I would like to have a dialogue about uh, this because I think I have good arguments. Uh, so, of course I'm for tolerance. As a Christian, I have a very high standard of, of tolerance. Jesus says, love your enemies. This is something that, this is the ultimate standard of tolerance. So, human rights, we are for human rights. They were written down 1948, three years after the terrible, terrible end of World War II with millions and millions of dead people. So people came together, 48, and said, we do not want this to happen again. This, the human being has universal human rights, which cannot be violated by any power. Universal means every human being always and everywhere. This is human rights. We are for human rights. We are against discrimination because we are tolerant. We are diversities in other uh, uh, terminus. We like diversity. Nature is built on diversity. So you hear all these concepts, they are all used to change our value system. How is this done?